Something I don't think a lot of people fully comprehend is just how much money is in major pro sports, at least in the United States. All these teams and all these leagues now have insane financial support. The New York Mets sold for $2.4 billion last year. There's talk that the Denver Broncos could sell for $4 billion next year. There is just so much money that goes into these teams. NFL teams even have their likenesses forever enshrined in Fortnite, so both in terms of money and V-Bucks, they have a lot of spending power. This is the world we live in. So it's pretty close to impossible in this day and age for a major sports team to just stop existing. I'm not talking about teams that move. Usually, moving is done out of opportunity to make more money. I'm talking about an entire franchise that just stops existing. It's such an alien concept nowadays, which is why I want to talk about the very last major team in the big four American sports leagues that folded. An NHL team that was so unstable they had five names in 11 seasons. A baseball owner overseeing the team as they turned into a circus. And unprecedented antics along with other stuff we have never seen since. Let's talk about their story because it is such a time capsule of another era in so many ways. Expansion happens a lot in sports. Chances are your favorite pro sports team is an expansion team of sorts. Hockey expanded in 1967, and one of the teams they added was the California Seals, and the Oakland Seals too, I guess. Same team, two names. Since the year the Seals joined the NHL, including their group of expansion teams, there have been 74 expansion teams across the big four leagues. They are the only one to have the franchise go completely extinct. All the other ones exist in some capacity today, but not the Seals. This is an NHL team that couldn't even afford to have their games televised or be on the radio in the 70s. So they were so broke that you couldn't even tune into their games unless you were physically there. A lot of sports teams have funny histories where the jokes write themselves. I have never seen anything like the history of the Seals. Reading this article on the team on sportsnet.ca, which I'm going to cite a lot of information from, was an absolute joy that I can't wait to share with you. Strap in, because trust me, you're going to see why this team didn't last long before what ended up being the final nail in their coffin. They only won 15 out of 74 games their first season before miraculously getting to the playoffs the next two years with sub-500 records in both of them. Even somehow getting in second place with an under-500 record. They got bounced quickly each time though. Which, it was amazing that they even got to the playoffs considering they had a coach so wild he would force the team to let him play with them during scrimmages, and he wouldn't allow practice to end until he scored a goal. The players begged this coach to at least have the chance to watch film of their games. He said no. What a different world it was back then. And they still made the playoffs twice in spite of this maniac. But already, no one in the area cared. Except for Tom Hanks, he was actually a Seals fan. No one except maybe Tom Hanks showed up to the games. The owner tried selling to a holding company that had Yankees Hall of Fame pitcher Whitey Ford as an investor, until said holding company missed a payment and gave the team back to the original owner. It was such a mess off the ice. Another baseball connection, Oakland A's owner Charlie Finley then bought the Seals. This is the same man who wanted to make baseballs orange. Oh. And it's going to enable the hitters to improve on their batting averages. This time, his plan was to turn the Seals into the Oakland A's. New green and yellow uniform, new golden skates, and a new name, the Bay Area Seals. That name lasted for literally two games. Two games! Two games before they changed their name again. I have never once seen anything like this. They changed the name of their franchise to match the names of their new skates, I guess, after the season already started. But then, maybe the best part of this whole subset of the story, they ended up changing their skate colors to white skates. Couldn't call the team the White Seals now, I guess. What they did do was literally have a seal lay down on the ice during games. Anything to get some buzz, am I right? Well, they really needed it, because their marketing budget was supposedly just $5,000 a year. Five grand a year! Let's talk about money in sports again, just to show how nuts that number is. In 1970, that was equivalent to just under $36,000. The minimum NHL salary this season is $750,000. 
This team hired their own streakers, had a promotion where they let barbers into the arena for free, they did whatever they could possibly do to get interest. But no one cared. This entire team feels like the subject of a bad 90s sports comedy movie. Attendance cratered down to as low as 2,500 fans a game, and it's not like they were any good on the ice to begin with, until they magically had enough money to sign a kid they just drafted for more than three times what hockey players typically made. The guy worth all that money would only go on to play six NHL seasons. By year three of his time owning the Seals, Charlie Finley already gave up. He did fire their coach three games into the 1971-72 season, only one game longer than it took them to change the team's name during his first year with them. Until they hired that guy again? They're bringing me back. <laughs> what? But not only did no one in the area care about the Seals, no one with enough money to buy them cared about buying them. That to me might be the most outdated thing of all from this entire story. Whenever pro teams go for sale today, there are always long, long lines of people who love to buy them. But Charlie Finley had to sell the seals back to the NHL itself for about six and a half million dollars. Zach Davies made more than that in baseball this past season. Marcus Morris makes almost two and a half times that amount this year. I'd like to think of this video as a piece on the evolution of money in sports as well, and a way of showing how much of it there is in this industry. And that's gotta be one of the more fun ways I can express that. A new guy bought the team later on. Still no fix. Minority owners' cries to move the team to Cleveland grew louder. The Seals needed saving. They should have started selling these all across California. Hey look, this was probably their arena budget in this season. This was an atrocious team on the ice though, which obviously didn't help. You know who else won 13 games? The 1922 Toronto St. Patrick's. They played 54 fewer games than the Seals. Seeking a fresh start, the Seals did wind up moving to Cleveland and changed their name to the Cleveland Barons, like Baron Zemo. Uh, I think we ain't done yet. I think. We ain't doing it. Things, somehow, got even worse. Only about 8,000 people showed up to their first game ever in Cleveland, and things got so bad that their owners suggested that they could literally run out of money before the season ended. In 1978, after just two years in Cleveland, the team was done. They quote, merged with another NHL team, the Minnesota North Stars, but Minnesota kept their name and their history and their players and basically just got to absorb whatever they felt like taking from Cleveland. And that was how an NHL team just stopped existing. They basically gave their franchise to another team. In 1978, that feels like such a wild time for that to happen in big pro sports. Like, that feels like that sort of thing would have happened when Calvin Coolidge was president. Not one year before the creation of ESPN. I don't think this story is known enough. This was just such a different time period, but it wasn't even that long ago. And that provides such interesting perspective to the way sports are now. So yeah, the Seals slash Barons no longer exist. When you go on the Seals Wikipedia page, it says, and I quote, They are the only franchise from the 1967 expansion never to reach the Stanley Cup Finals. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe because the franchise died over 40 years ago? But both the Bay Area and Ohio have NHL teams again. A bit of a happy-ish ending there. The San Jose Sharks have even paid tribute to the Seals in the past, for paving the way I suppose. Although this was probably anything but paving the way. This story provides commentary on the landscape of pro sports today, which is why this video exists. There will never be another team like this in the future of sports. And that's a good thing. A team in one of the big leagues will never have to straight up fold again. These leagues are all so profitable and have so much fan interest behind them that for a team that only stopped existing over 40 years ago, things have changed so much since then. At the time of this video going out, Major League Baseball is in a lockout. It's, among other things, over money. Think about that. And then think about the financial status of a team like the Seals. Take a second to realize how far sports have come. And also be thankful that your team doesn't totally rebrand two games into the season. Or that your coaches don't force their way to score goals in practice. If anything is right, what do you know? And no one wastes time to hero. If anything is right, what do you know? And no one wastes time to hero. Starting lies